Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to day one of our nonprofit Imagine Conference. I'm Amber Gamini. I'm on the AWS nonprofit marketing team, and I'll be the MC for the rest of the day in this room. I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Jeremy Farkas, Senior Marketing Manager at Amazon Smile. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for coming out. My name is Jeremy Farkas. I lead marketing for Amazon Smile. I've been with the team for just over five years now, and those of you that have been to this conference in the past may have heard me speak at prior years, but I'm really excited to be back here today and share a bunch of new, exciting information with you. All right, so we're going to break up the presentation into two pieces. The first will be just a relatively brief overview of Amazon Smile. I'm sure many of you in the room may already be familiar with or hopefully even using Amazon Smile, but I'm sure not everybody is. And so we'll do a, just a quick overview of the program. And then we'll spend most of the time talking about Amazon Smile charity lists. And again, if you've been here in the past, you know that we, we talked about charity lists uh, list yet last year. Uh, but what's exciting is that we've been live now for several months, and one of the things that uh, charities are asking me most frequently when I, when I talk to uh, nonprofits is they want to hear about how other organizations are using um, different elements and how they're being, how they're successful and what kind of best practices they can take back to their organizations. And so that's what we'll spend the majority of time talking about is we'll, we'll look at um, some, some use cases, some best practices, we'll go through uh, a case study. All right, so <clears throat> quick overview of the program. So what is Smile? At its core, Amazon Smile is just a really easy way for nonprofits, 501c3s, uh, to receive cash donations when your supporters uh, do their shopping at smile.amazon.com. It's the same Amazon experience, same products, same prices, same prime. Um, everything is exactly the same except when they shop at smile.amazon.com, they pick a charity uh, that they want to support, and we donate a percentage of the purchase price of eligible purchases to their charity. Some things that we're pretty excited about. Since we've uh, started, we've donated over $134 million. Uh, but the recent growth is what we're, what we're really excited about. Uh, so in the last four quarters, we've donated over $45 million. And uh, we're just actually finishing up our most recent disbursement of roughly $10 million right now. Uh, so it'll be about $144, $145 million uh, in, in about a week. So that's excited to see that. Uh, we're currently available in US, Germany, and, and UK. And in addition to the core uh, kind of cash program, uh, as we'll talk about shortly, we're now also a, a platform where you can receive in-kind donations or product donations uh, through charity lists. So how to get started, again, if you are not already using Smile, it's really easy to get signed up. It's free. You go to org.amazon.com. Uh, you'll select a charity administrator, just have, to have some contact information, put in some bank account information where you want your donations to be uh, sent every quarter. Uh, if your organization um, uses in-kind donations or accepts in-kind donations or wants to experiment with it, you can create a charity list there. Uh, and then you'll get a link, uh, this unique uh, Amazon Smile link that you can share uh, with your supporters. And let's take a second to talk about that if you, even if you are using uh, Smile today and if you're not familiar with this link. Every charity has a unique link and it's, you'll see the example at smile.amazon.com slash ch slash and then it's your EIN or your tax ID number. And what that link does is basically it uh, lets customers find your organization really easily. So when customers go to the first time, again, they select a charity. There's over a million charities to choose from. And so um, to make it easier for customers to make sure that they're finding your specific charity, when they click on this link, it bypasses that whole charity selection process. And it just defaults them to supporting your organization if they're brand new or if they're already supporting a different organization. It'll just ask if they want to change. Um, so from a marketing perspective, from your perspective, you don't have to waste kind of copy with instructions on how to find your, your organization in the list. You can just go straight, you know, just give them this link and they'll, they'll go straight and find your organization. How do customers use Smile? Uh, so there's a few different ways. Traditionally, for the last several years, it's really been a browser-based program. Again, they just shop at smile.amazon.com, uh, and, and we do a percentage of uh, the purchase price for eligible, eligible purchases. Uh, most recently, we just launched uh, uh, in, we just lost integration into the Amazon uh, shopping app for Android. So we're really excited about that. It's the first step. We're still working on iOS. I'll cut off the Q&A early. We don't have a date for you yet, uh, but we are working on iOS. It will be coming next. Um, but we are really excited that we got Android uh, out the door. And so people that are shopping on Android devices, there's a couple steps they have to take, but they can uh, essentially turn on uh, Amazon Smile and then their app um, purchases will generate donations for the charity as well. And then the third 
third thing, which again we'll talk about, is charity lists. So when they go to smile.amazon.com slash charity lists, uh, you can kind of see what that looks like on the right. They can find um, lists that charities have set up of, of items that they specifically need, and they can just uh, buy them from, uh, buy them for the charity and get shipped directly to the charity. It's a super easy way uh, for customers to, to support charities. Uh, so in terms of recent launches, uh, Android is obviously one of the big ones, uh, and like I said, iOS will be coming next. But the other thing that we launched relatively recently uh, is the Amazon Smile Metrics dashboard. And again, we heard from charities that one of the issues that they were having with the program is that just like any marketing program, it's really important to be able to measure the performance, right? You're gonna, if you're gonna do a Facebook post, you're gonna send an email talking about Smile, uh, you wanna know how it performed. And, and historically, we hadn't, just kind of shared a lot of information to make that helpful, to, to have that information handy. Uh, so we developed this uh, metrics dashboard, which uh, this is just an example, um, but it has some donation, uh, donation history information, but it also gives you the number of customers supporting your charity and also the number of purchases that uh, were made supporting your charity uh, by day. And it, it gives, there's a week over week uh, breakout that we have with Graph, and you can download uh, a report for the last 90 days. And what this does is basically, if you're again, if you're doing like a Facebook post, you can look at the trends, and you can be like, okay, well, on average, we <clears throat> get this many, you know, purchases per day, and then we did a Facebook post, and you can. Uh, and I'm sorry, we will do Q and A at the end, so uh, just going to hold questions for now, if you don't mind. Um, and so again, you can, you can kind of see the incremental benefits of uh, or the impact of your um, of your marketing. All right, so moving into charity lists. So again, a quick high-level overview of what charity lists are. Uh, so it is a, a product donation experience built specifically for charities, leveraging Amazon's uh, selection, prices, logistics, and convenience. Uh, when customers come, again, uh, this is a, the customer view when they, when they show up, and there's nine categories. They can also search for your charity specifically by name or by location or other kind of keyword, um, or you, they can select um, by a uh, category. So a lot of charities historically have used just Amazon wish lists because for a long time that was really the best option out there or one of the few options out there for receiving in-kind donations, um, especially through Amazon. Uh, and while wish lists are certainly good, um, they really weren't built specifically for this use case. Wish, uh, wish lists were built really more for the consumer model. You know, my birthday's coming up, friends and family want to know what to get me, and so I'll put a bunch of stuff on my wish list. And so there's a lot of things that, that uh, charities wanted and, and customers, frankly, wanted uh, that are not included because it just wasn't built for that. And so we built um, charity lists with, with a bunch of enhancements. Uh, so obviously the ability to request products is included in both. Um, but one of the big things that you get with charity lists is exposure to customers. So in addition to obviously you, you know, your organization marketing um, to your supporters and letting people know that, that you have this charity list, uh, we uh, as Amazon are, are going to be, are, are and will continue to be marketing to, uh, to Amazon Smile customers and to other Amazon customers um, and, and helping them discover, um, and especially to your own supporters, helping them discover these lists and encouraging conversion off of that. And so that kind of increased exposure uh, is something you're only gonna get with, uh, with charity lists. Direct shipping is another thing that we heard was a problem specifically with wish lists where um, customers would accidentally uh, ship things to their own homes instead of to the charity. And so for the most part, uh, the default uh, shipping address now when someone's making a charity list purchase is directly to the charity. So you'll set up the, the address in your charity list and when they make a purchase, it will just go directly to your organization um, and reduce those shipping errors. Branding options, again, you'll see uh, in a minute when we go through a, a really quick demo, uh, you'll be able to add um, a, a banner image, a logo, mission statement, a description about how you're gonna use it so you can really keep it in, on brand uh, with, with the rest of your uh, you know, kind of organizational marketing. <clears throat> Verified badges, this is another thing that we really heard more on the customer side, but customers um, had an issue where it's really hard on the wish list to want to find uh, charity lists in general uh, through the wish list platform, uh, but also to know that it's really the right organization. They, they kind of all look the same. There's really no easy way to know that this is like the real ASPCA, the real St. Jude. Um, and, and so there's not a high degree of confidence, um, but with Amazon Smile charity list, uh, you can only, only 501c3 organizations uh, that have been um, 
uh, with the address verified and everything like that can participate in the program. And so um, it's going to reduce some of that friction uh, from the customer side and it's going to increase the conversion rate because they're going to feel kind of relatively confident knowing that, that their money is actually going to support the charity. So this is just a handful. And again, uh, the program's only been live for a handful of months. We'll obviously continue to be um, building out new features and enhancements. Uh, so again, if you have been using wish lists, probably a good time to, uh, to upgrade to charity lists. Oh, sorry, I missed one. Downloadable reports. Uh, you can also download uh, reports uh, with, with purchase history, um, which is helpful for both from uh, just kind of managing your list and, and seeing the performance. So we'll do a really quick demo. It's about three minutes on how to uh, set up a charity list, and then we'll, we'll keep moving from there. First, log into your Org Central account and click Get Started. Next, you'll enter some information about your organization. Select whether you're permitted to solicit charitable donations in all U.S. jurisdictions or just your specific state. Next, uplo upload your logo. Then select which category best describe your organization. Next, enter the list name. This is just a brief description of the list, and we recommend that you do not include your organization's name in the list name. Select which address you want your donations to be delivered. The default address is the one that you registered with the IRS. If you'd like to enter a new address, you can. Just please note that you'll have to enter uh, some documentation uh, showing that the address is affiliated with your organization. Now that the list is created, you can add a cover photo, add a list description, and add products. You can upload a cover photo to have a better branded experience. Go to list settings to add a list description. If you had multiple addresses, you could change your address here, and you can also select which privacy policy uh, makes most sense for the where you're at in the list creation process. Uh, for private, you can only see the list. Uh, this is great when you're first setting it up. Uh, click shared if you want to, for example, review it within your organization, uh, and then pu uh, public once you're ready for customers to be able to see the list. Next, you can add products. There's a number of categories of uh, common products that you can choose from, or you can uh, type in a keyword. We recommend that you add between 10 and 100 uh, products of varying price points. Once you've added items, you can click on the Edit button. You can add a description uh, to explain how you're planning on using the product. You can change the number that you requested, and you can flag as high priority. Once you've added your, all of your items and you're ready to go, again, you can go back to list settings and switch to either shared or to public. For now, I'm just going to click shared. Once you do that, you'll see these uh, options appear. Uh, you can click this copy link. And that is the link that you'll be able to use to share with your uh, supporters uh, via email or social media or your website. Great. All right. And again, you just go to org, org.amazon.com if you wanted to um, give that a try. All right. So next, we'll talk about a couple of common use cases. So there's really two com really common ones that we've been seeing uh, most nonprofits using. One uh, is for evergreen needs, so things that you're just going to use really all throughout the year, largely budget offsetting items. So, for example, if you run a, a shelter, you're going to need food, you're going to need cleaning supplies probably all year round. If you have a, a school or a kids club, you might need art supplies and other types of supplies. So again, it's a great way to get some you know, budget offsetting donations. The other uh, really common use case that we're seeing a lot of success with is really seasonal and one-off needs. So, for example, if there's a, a back-to-school drive, um, 
you know, a holiday toy drive or what we'll see in the case study coming up is there's an organization that was doing a building renovation and they needed supply specifically for, you know, this specific project. So again, that sense of urgency um, has, tends to be really successful um, and, and people really respond to those. There is a third use case that um, I think people don't think about as much, especially larger organizations. Um, there's often, especially in larger organizations, there tend to be kind of secondary activities that you don't necessarily talk about as much. Um, things that you know are not necessarily like your core to your your. Um, primary measure, what you're not necessarily most known for, uh, but that you might need things for. So a, a really good, interesting example would be American Cancer Society. Everyone knows about American Cancer Society, obviously a very well-known brand, um, and people know about their research and advocacy and things like that. But what people may not know is that they operate a, uh, a chain of um, kind of housing facilities called uh, Hope Lodges, where if can uh, ca cancer patients and caregivers can go and oops go and stay <clears throat> if they're traveling for treatment and they can't afford a place to stay for you know a long period of time, they can stay for free. Um, and of course, places like that are going to need supplies just like like anything else. They're going to need cleaning supplies. They're going to need toiletries and things like that. Um, and so it's a great uh, way not only to get those supplies, but almost more importantly, it's it's a really good opportunity to talk about other things that you do that people might not be aware of. So this is kind of an interesting way that, you know, an organization like American Cancer Society, and there's a lot of, there's, I could have listed several um, in conversations that I've had with large organizations where once you kind of dive deep, there's other things that, uh, you know, American Lung Association gives, um, like uh, chemical-free um, cleaning supplies and HEPA uh, air filters, HEPA air filters to uh, families with kids, um, that have asthma, low-income uh, families with kids with asthma, and et cetera, et cetera. There's a laundry list, and so if, so if you're if you're thinking to yourself, oh, we don't normally do, uh, in, you know, accepting kind donations, I would just um, suggest that maybe you think about other things that you do. That again, this gives you an opportunity one to get supplies that you might need, but also a way for you to talk to your uh, supporters and kind of explain some of these other things that you're doing. So next, we'll go through uh, a short case study, and this is also in your packet that you received uh, along with many other case studies, uh, but Niagara Falls Boys and Girls Club. So I'll just tell you a little bit about the organization first. Uh, so the Boys and Girls Club, they operate eight clubs throughout the city of uh, Niagara Falls in New York. They serve about 1,400 people. Uh, they've got four full-time and 56 part-time employees and about 150 volunteers, and they operate with about a million dollar annual budget. So how are they using uh, list. So they, this is the organization that I referenced earlier, that they were doing a, a club renovation. And so in addition to the things that they just need all year long, uh, they were creating this new room in their club that they called their little kid room. It was specifically for, you know, for younger kids. And so they didn't have, um, you know, kind of toys and, and furniture and things like that specifically for these younger children. And so they created two lists, one for the general items and one for this little kid room. And all they did, it was, it, that's one of the beautiful things that we're seeing with Charity Lists is that the promotion tends to be relatively lightweight, that we've seen um, really successful charities. So all this charity did was they did a couple of Facebook posts. Um, they, they did two Facebook posts and just let people know, hey, you know, we're doing this renovation, um, we're doing this new room, we have a whole bunch of supplies, you know, if you wouldn't mind checking out our Amazon Charity List, um, you know, that would, that would be super helpful. Um, so relatively lightweight, relatively easy to, uh, to, to do. And within days, they received thousands of dollars of products. Um, and I, I talked to uh, one of the executives there and I asked her, you know, what was, this, what, you know, what was your experience? Obviously, they were very happy uh, with the performance. But the thing that she said that she liked the, the most was that they, the products they receive are exactly the ones that they wanted. They said a lot of times with, with in-kind donations, um, they'll, they'll put out a list of things and then they'll they'll get things that are either you know, used or damaged or not the right brand or not exactly the right product, not exactly what they wanted. But with uh, Charity List, they're literally able to select the exact item that they wanted and that's the exact item that they received. So they said that was super useful. They were able to actually use everything that they got um, instead of having to like, sort and, and filter and all that good stuff. And so they were super happy with it. Um, and again, just you know, thousands of dollars worth of products with a couple of Facebook posts, they were really, really happy with that, uh, with that return. And this is just one example. Again, this is this is one they've got a thousand, you know, a couple thousand dollars. But there are organizations that, again, have sent out a couple, of, uh, you know, an email and a couple of Facebook posts and got literally tens of thousands of dollars uh, within a week. So we're seeing anything from you know hundreds of thousands to tens of thousands of dollars. 
So uh, next we'll talk about best practices. So there are um, eight best practices that uh, we'll go through, and some of them are a little bit related, uh, and some of them we've talked about a little bit already, but we'll go through them. Uh, the first, again, is to create multiple, uh, multiple lists. Uh, again, some, one might, could be a good one for your sort of evergreen needs, but other could be for specific locations um, or specific purposes throughout the year. So like Make-A-Wish Foundation is an interesting example. They've got, a lot of organizations have, are broken down into regions, uh, so you could have one organization with multiple regions or a region with multiple chapters. Uh, so Make-A-Wish uh, of Alaska and Washington, uh, they've got three offices. There's Seattle, Alaska, and Spokane. And what, again, one of the really nice things is that you can set up different addresses for each of these uh, three. And so if I'm buying for the Spokane list, the donations are just going to go directly to that Spokane office. So you don't have to worry about any of the logistics of uh, moving things around. Um, and then again, people obviously prefer to give locally. That's what everyone's told me, people prefer to give locally, and so uh, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, people being like, oh, I, I prefer to give to my, my, you know, the Alaska um, chapter because they, they have that option. So that's one interesting way. Again, Mary's Place is another example. They've got their just general shelter needs, but then they're doing a back-to-school drive right now, and so they have a, a list, and then car seats might be another, you know, year-round type of thing. Second best practice, uh, again, is just to make sure that you have a, a you know, really good branded experience. Again, this is just another another inner way for uh, customers and, and your supporters to interact with your brand and your organization. So, um, making sure that they feel comfortable. Yeah, you know, this is really the, the organization I'm intending to support. And again, keeping every you know keeping you top of mind. So having that cover uh, photo, the logo, uh, you know, a really good description. Again, it's just going to be a better customer experience. Again, increase that conversion rate and just leave them with a more positive experience with your brand. Uh, number three is to clearly indicate how items on your list will be used, and there's really two ways of doing this. One is in your marketing. So this is, as an example here, this is a, a pet shelter, a cat shelter, um, that, you know, it's just really, really obvious. They got a picture of a Purell uh, hand sanitizer dispenser, and they said, you know, we want to keep our cats and our volunteers healthy, uh, so we need, we want to put one of these in every room. We need 20 of them. Um, it's just really, really obvious if you're, you know, if you support this organization, you see this as you're scrolling through Facebook, it's a really easy way for you to be like, oh, you know what? That sounds like a worthwhile thing to do. I can spend 20 bucks on that. And they hop in and, and, and buy it, and it's a, a super easy experience. And again, they, customers feel really good knowing exactly where, you know, this day and age with transparency and all that, they know exactly how their, how their money's being spent to, to help your mission. Uh, the other way is, again, I, I mentioned when you're actually adding products, you can click on edit and you can add a, a description. And that can be helpful if you're using a product where either it's expensive or it's maybe being used for a, a purpose that customers wouldn't sort of guess or really wouldn't understand exactly how you're going to be using it. Again, you can put a description of, of why you need that product. And again, it just will make customers feel a little bit more confident and, and just feel like that a better experience. Uh, number four, this one's a little bit obvious. Some of them are a little bit common sense, but include compelling imagery of um, charity list items in use and the people or animals or environment that you're serving. So again, if you're scrolling through Facebook, um, you know, the cute kitty or puppy pictures or a cute kid or, or you know, whatever animals um, are, you know, going to be the thing that grabs people's attention and then you can bring them in, um, you know, have them read the actual description. So making sure that you have those, that, that cute dynamic imagery, um, just like, you know, I'm sure all of your nonprofit marketing uses those types of things, um, but may want to make sure that you remember to do that uh, for this as well. Uh, number five, uh, and I, you know, this was covered in the demo, but make sure you add uh, really an interesting variety of products. Again, people are going to have different price points that they're comfortable shopping with. They're going to have different, necessarily, potentially different ideas of the types of things that they want to buy for your organization or what they think is valuable. Um, and so making sure that you have, you know, again, that, that good variety of, of products on your list is just going to, again, help increase conversion. Number six, uh, it's just to share your list regularly through social media, email, and on your website. Again, we, we really see, I and mean, this is going to be obviously the number one driver. Um, we, we've seen organizations that are really successful with just these one-off, you know, I have something I need right now and I'll just do a one-off post. And we see other organizations that really invest in this and they're posting, these are organizations that tend to post something every single day or even maybe multiple times a day, and they'll post about charity lists um, or Amazon Smile in general 
weekly or monthly, uh, and they really build up a good following. And so, so when we look at like the top organizations in terms of donations received or in terms of product donations received, um, the folks that are just act actively out there talking about it are obviously the ones that are um, seeing the most success. Number seven is to add a deadline uh, to generate that, that sense of urgency. Again, this is just a, a general good, you know, marketing best practice. Um, but again, like a back to school drive is a really good example if, if people understand that there's, there's something they need to do right now, there's much less likelihood that they're just going to procrastinate and be like, oh, I'll do it later and then just forget all about it. So like this organization actually put in a deadline in their, in their copy, um, but just even titling it back to school or, you know, calling out that it's a holiday drive or something, uh, including some sense of urgency. Um, again, just going to encourage people to take action right then and there. Uh, and then lastly, it's just to thank supporters and show the impact, obviously, just like, just like your um, direct donations, everyone likes that, that thank you um, and, and likes to see that they're part of something bigger. And, and Smile is really a program that works at scale, <clears throat> especially the core program, but, uh, but with charity lists as well. So, you know, I might buy one thing, uh, but when you see that, that picture of, you know, 100 boxes, um, it's kind of a cool feeling to know that you're really, you know, part of this community that's helping to, um, to support your organization. All right, so again, I think everybody got a uh, packet that has uh, a bunch of our uh, case studies and best practices. If you didn't, um, you can swing by our booth, um, or just in general, if you have questions about the program, you can uh, swing by our booth and, um, and, and chat with any of us. But I think we have actually plenty of time for uh, Q&A. And I thought you were up first, because you were in the middle of the presentation. And do we have a runner with Mike? So we do. OK, hold on one second. I saved up all my questions. The first, <laughs> first one is, is this embedded inside Amazon Smile, or do people need to go to two separate sites if they want to shop regular and then go to charity list? So to go to charity list, um, it's sort of a sub URL. So it's smile.amazon.com slash charity list. Um, again, we're, we're building out ways that they're going to discover it if they're just shopping at smile.amazon.com, uh, but if they specifically want to go to the charity list site, then it's smile.amazon.com slash charity list. At least they can go through Smile. I didn't want them to go someplace else. Correct. Second question and third, they're very short. One, can you use PO boxes for shipping? And the second is uh, the slide that said 850 customers. Are those unique nope. or uh, are they unique 850 or repetitive customers? The 850, well, that was just an example, but it, in general, it is uh, the number of customers that have ever supported your organization. So it, in, it could actually be a little bit less if someone, say, switches and decides to support a different organization, but it's um, people that, uh, that have ever supported your organization. And I'm going to look to my team. P.O. boxes, yes, no? Anyone? No. No P.O. boxes. Uh, yep. sort of a, a crowd type of funding. For example, if you have something expensive, mm. uh, and yet you know your donors are probably not going to pony up on one specific big purchase, yet you'd really like to have that. <laughs> Is it possible for them to say, well, I want to you know, I want to put in my $50 towards this major item and then sort of wait till other things come? Can, can it be used like as a crowdfunding type of opportunity to buy something specific? Yeah, not yet, but it is something that we have on the on the radar, and um, something that we'll hopefully we'll be able to develop in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely on the radar. Oh, hold on one second. Uh, my question is: Is this only available on the U.S. point of sale? And then, if it's an international charity, how do you do you help with the like? How do we get to the international location? Yeah, so currently it's U.S., but it's being uh, rolled out to the other marketplaces where we operate, so U.K. and, and uh, Germany. Um, so hopefully in the relatively uh, near future, that'll be in, in all three marketplaces. Um, in terms of just international for, you know, to say we, we help people in Haiti or, or, you know, or in Africa or South America or anywhere else, uh, right now, that's uh, that's not something that we're able to sort of support through charity list. So you'd have to ship it to your you know your headquarters or your organization in the U.S. and then have it shipped over. Um, so yeah, right now that's that's the the only way we're able to do it. Picking people at random.
first, I just want to say thank you so much for thinking strategically about how to help nonprofits fill these needs that are really imperative to our, our mission. Um, from a fundraising standpoint, the donor relations is really important to be able to genuinely thank and engage with them because they are donors, but they're also shoppers. Do you have examples of um, either how people have done that on a more personal level versus just you know thanking with a post and or if you could explain how information is available to us of who those donors slash purchasers are. That seems like it could be really complicated. Yeah, no, it's a great question. It's actually, it's one of the, the most common uh, questions that and requests that I get. Right? We, we have a lot of conversations with nonprofits, as you can imagine. Um, and it is, is uh, I say, the unanimous uh, question is kind of that data sharing. It's also, unfortunately, one of the hardest ones to solve uh, because Amazon's sort of, um, you know, really, really, really stringent uh, requirements around uh, data privacy, right? We, we can't share customer information because customers don't want us to share customer information. Um, and so it's something that we're, we've been actively working on. It's actually something that we're, we have on our roadmap right now is to test different options. It, it's probably, it's, it may never be, I don't want to say never, but it's, it's most likely not going to be in the short term at least, you know, where we just give you names and email addresses because that's really, really hard. Although that is an option is, that we're exploring is to sort of get explicit permission from customers, um, but I don't know how that's going to play out yet. Uh, but there's other options that we're looking at in terms of can we um, have, for example, charities upload, you know, thank you messages that then we deliver um, to, you know, dir directly, you know, kind of like a message, you know, thank you from your charity, and, and that way it's sort of that as close as we can to the charity directly thanking the customer without, again, sharing that information. So, um, again, I can't commit to anything right now because we're, we're still talking, trying to figure out kind of the different options and what makes the most sense, and, um, and, but that is something that we're actively working on and, uh, and trying to figure out. Um, I think one of the challenges that my organization has with Amazon Smile is just like accessing Amazon Smile, even for people that like I know about it. I work at a nonprofit and I still forget every time I shop on Amazon to actually go to smile.amazon.com. What kind of thoughts or like practices are you hoping to put into effect just so that it becomes more commonplace for people to be using Amazon Smile while just making like regular Amazon purchases or to better integrate it into the Amazon platform? Yeah, so I mean, we uh, obviously at Amazon, you know, we have consumer marketing that we do to try to kind of re remind and engage people, and, and there's, there's different things that we're trying with, uh, we're trying to do some tests directly with charities to see if we can do um, some kind of campaigns to really target specific supporters of a, of a charity to kind of engage them a little bit more. There's, um, we just started something relatively recently where we send out a, now a consumer uh, notification email every quarter when their charity uh, receives a donation uh, over a certain amount. Um, so that's just a, kind of a, a continuous touch point that they'll get every quarter. Um, we're, we started to send just recently um, sort of pre-holiday email, so like before, uh, well Prime Day wasn't, didn't count because I get so many emails around Prime Day, but Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, back to school, um, the end of the year holiday, uh, we're sending out emails to people, kind of reminding them, like, hey, you know, uh, you know, Father's Day or Mother's Day is coming up. You know, if you're going to be doing your shopping anyway on Amazon, don't forget to shop at Smile. So there's a bunch of stuff that we're doing on the marketing side, and we're uh, there's no shortage of ideas. It's just a bandwidth of, of testing and executing as many things as we possibly can. Um, and then, of course, uh, on the charity side, uh, this really is a, a, a you know, kind of a joint effort where um, it's, I know it's, it's non-traditional, it's not how no, most uh, kind of cause marketing partnerships work, uh, but we really do uh, lean on the, the charities to engage your own supporters as well. And so, you know, to the extent where, like I said, we see some organizations that have organically um, just done tremendous, uh, you know, had, had really tremendous results and it's because they are, are investing in it just like they are investing in any other type of program where, again, they're out there actively, you know, sharing uh, reminders and sharing thank you messages and sharing the donation amounts and um, showing the impact with through pictures and, and videos and things like that. Um, and their supporters are super engaged. And uh, so the charities that are doing that obviously have a little bit more success than the, the charities that, that don't. And, you know, it can be as passive or as active as you want. You know, we're going to do as much as we can. But again, uh, to, to some extent, you can also, uh, you know, control uh, the results. Yeah, are you there? Two questions. Oh, Mike. 
Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning. I have two questions, the first of which is, how do you get your tax-deductible receipt for making the gift? And the second is, Amazon has become an extremely wonderful corporate citizen. And I'm just wondering why you folks don't uh, show up on the Puget Sound Business Journal list, because you clearly have earned the right to be on that list. Uh, good question. The second one, I don't know the answer to, um, but feel free to ask them. To <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I, I don't know. I don't know um, how organizations get put on that list or not, so I, I can't answer you on that one. On the first one, uh, so if, if you're just shopping at smile at Amazon.com, again, those donations are funded through Amazon, so there's no tax receipt for that. If you uh, make a purchase through Charity List, I believe you can, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe you can... Uh, you can go into your account, and I believe there is a way to download the tax receipt for that purchase. I don't know off the top of my head exactly how, where it is, but I, again, we'll look at my team and see if anybody, I'm sorry, it's in order history? Gotcha, thank you. Uh, it's nice to have my, my team here. Uh, so if you go to your order history, apparently there's a, you can download your uh, tax receipt. Yeah. You can just pick other people. Um, so uh, one of my organization's biggest needs is actually cloud resources. So I, I'm curious if there's a, an integration on your roadmap anywhere. Um, if I could actually just have my community pay for like some uptime in an EC2 instance. That's an interesting question. That's honestly not something that we've really honestly heard much in the past. So it's not something that's, that we're actively thinking about. But thanks for bringing that to our attention and something we can, we can noodle on in the future. Um. Hey, Jeremy. No. <laughs> um, on the Android app, and I guess on the future iOS app, when that comes, which I, I know you didn't give a timeline, but by the end of the year, right? Um, <laughs> um, if, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the, um, wh is it just sending the link out and then it just gets prompted in the app? Like, what is that experience like within Android now to sort of get people to sign up that way? Like, is that something we can announce? And how do we steer people towards that, just given how much mobile, how many mobile transactions there are? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, I'll see if there's a way. It's a, it's a great question. I'll see if there's a way after this for us to kind of put together maybe a sheet on how to better communicate it, because I'm not going to be able to like, fully explain it right here on the stage without visual aids or anything like that. But essentially, you can go to, if you, in your Android app, you can go to settings and uh, in the little menu on the top left, and you can go to scroll down, and you'll see Amazon Smile. And then this is a couple of things you have to do to enable Amazon Smile. So it's a relatively easy uh, process, but I, like I said, just, just would be able to. And just, just a quick follow-up to that. Yeah. In the app, once they do that, does it stay that way, or is it like you need to remember every time you go in no. to go? OK, that no. is, that set it and forget it. Uh, yeah, the, they may have to periodically take some uh, some actions, but it's not like they'll have to do it every single session. Cool, thanks. Yeah. You mentioned you mentioned the bigger shopping holidays, and I was wondering if there's any integration with Prime Day. There's not a specific integration, other than obviously a lot of people do their shopping on, on Prime Day, and so we generate a lot of donations for charity, which we're really excited about. Uh, and obviously, we do additional marketing around Prime Day, but there's no nothing special for that, that we did for Prime Day otherwise. I have a question for you about the app. I'm over here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, Voices, I, I know that you said that it's not coming to iOS, but do you have a breakdown of how many people actually shop on their phones versus how many people shop online? Because I have a feeling it's a lot more on the app. Uh, that's data we don't share, unfortunately, but yes, a lot of people shop on the app. So that's something that's super important to us as a nonprofit. If we're going to be able to help promote Amazon and have this feature, then we want to be able to have it be so that the people that are do uh, the the outlet that they're using for the shopping is the easiest one to get to for us also. And then, how do you guys decide what exactly gets for the Amazon Smile? Because it seems like the how what gets the donation part. I mean, how do you decide what item the person's buying is is valid for a donation or not. Oh, which, which products are eligible? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, because we, I mean, we have lots of people shopping on there, but yet the return for the, for us, for Amazon, for the wish list, or I mean, for the smile is not great. Yeah, so almost virtually all physical products are eligible. So there's only a handful of, of categories that are not eligible and right now. That's digital downloads, gift cards, uh, recurring subscribe and save purchases, and, um, and memberships and, subscri and subscriptions. But 
basically all, virtually all physical things that you can buy on Amazon are eligible. Did I answer your question? Kind of? Is there, what, what, what did I not answer? Okay. Oh, hi. Uh, we work with India and they have the uh, charity list now for the uh, NGOs in India. Uh, when will they be expanding their product capabilities to anywhere near what we offer here? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch the question. In India, not oh, as many oh, products are uh, available. So um, on our charity list, you said people could buy through UK, Germany, and USA. Right now, charity list is US. It's coming to UK and Germany uh, soon. Uh, but yeah, it's not, not available in India right now. So India has their own charity list now, Amazon Wish India. So when, uh, but it's rather limited. Yeah, that's a separate program, so unfortunately I can't speak to, to that program in India. Okay. everybody. All right. Well, thank you all so much for coming. I hope you have a great rest of the conference. And I believe, is there a break after this? Or? Okay. Second keynote downstairs, if you didn't hear that. Thanks, everyone.